let's ask what should your life insurance do for you? And I'll break that into five simple statements just to make this easy as we move from life insurance. Number one, your life insurance should be there when you die. The whole purpose of buying insurance is so at our death, someone else has benefit. So make sure that it, the right amount of your insurance in your program will be there when you die. Number two, your insurance can maximize your pension. And I just spoke about that in the last few moments in that you can make sure that you're taking care of your spouse in the event of your death and still make the most of your pension. Uh, number three, life insurance can potentially be a tax-free asset. What does that mean? Well, tax-free means when you pass away, you, typically a spouse doesn't have to pay tax on the, the proceeds from life insurance policy. Also, if you build cash value in a life insurance policy, cash can build inside of that program and can be distrib distributed to you while you're living in a tax-free environment. That's the cash that you build up in the program. Number four, you have a potential for a long-term care benefit. Some life insurance policies nowadays actually allow you to draw the death benefit down early to take care of yourself in case you need uh, assisted, assisted living or, or more than assisted living even. If you can't do certain activities of daily living like uh, eating, toileting, bathing, transferring, some of those things, Life insurance policies can give you the death benefit early, but be careful. Make sure you know when you're in a policy if that option is available or not, and don't just assume it. Not all policies have that feature. And lastly, asset protection. So let's jump into a case study. You see my statistics on the screen here. We've got a 58-year-old female retiring at 62, making about $93,000 a year. They have basic A, B times five, and C times five, and they've got some long-term care. So let's put together the numbers based on those statistics. And I, it's a fair amount of numbers on the screen, so bear with me and I'll walk you through them. Uh, first, we have the monthly premium while working. Their Fegley is going to run, in this scenario, $237 a month. And we picked a federal long-term care program that ran about $257 a month. What's their benefit? We'll go to that right-hand column and you'll see the insurance benefit while working is almost $600,000 worth of death benefit over $200,000 worth of long-term care benefit. So for $494 a month, in this case, she's getting $814,000 worth of insurance benefit. Now understand I've just commingled Fegley and Flitsip. So some of it is death benefit, some of it is long-term care benefit, but for the insurance discussion purposes, I've lumped them together for discussion. Now let's step into retirement and see what happens with these numbers. Fegley, as you see, goes to $704 a month, the FLTSIP would stay the same. Everything else is pretty much the same, but now your monthly cost is $961 a month for the $814,000 worth of total benefit. So this is one way to solve your uh, death benefit and long-term care benefit options uh, using the current program. Let's compare that for just a moment to a, an alternative scenario. What if we take this differential, which as you see on the screen again, is that $467 increase in cost just by retiring. The only transaction that happened here is you went from working to retirement. So what if we take that amount of money and look at a reduction in Fegley and an outside insurance program? Look at the numbers on the screen. Again, everything here is hypothetical. There's nothing... There's no commitment from an insurance company with this, just some quotes to give us something to talk about. A private policy purchased on a 58-year-old female uh, could run around $478 a month, and that would give $350,000 worth of death benefit. We can keep the Fegley basic at age 62 with the 75% reduction. That's gonna be about $30 a month, providing $97,000 worth of benefit. So we add that up, we've got just about $450,000 worth of benefit. Depending on the insurance that you purchase, some portion of that $350,000 of life insurance could be used to cover your long-term care needs. Also, if you have long-term care needs, you may still have uh, the value of your home. You, may have, you will have your pension money. You may ever have other assets. You may be able to put together several different pieces of the pie to cover your long-term care needs. 
So I'm not recommending this as an, as an example that we've just talked about. Let me put that back on screen for just a moment. Uh, you see these elements. I'm not recommending this for anyone, but I'm just saying it could be substantial savings uh, relative to riding Fegley and adding FEHB to the mix. Uh, many permanent policies may allow you to get this death benefit early using what's typically called in the industry a chronic illness rider.